This is the Oklahoma Sooner postgame show. And for the Sooners, they definitely were prepared for this hurricane warning. In fact, Oklahoma prepared a forecast of their own. A 100% chance of Sooner points and a 0% probability of Tulsa points. Well, it was a guaranteed forecast and there was a 45 to nothing beatdown on the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. I think I had the game predicted 38-24. So obviously the game far exceeded my expectations for the Sooners. It wasn't just a victory, but it creates a lot of excitement and a lot of momentum for the Sooner team. Now they get two weeks to prepare for the Miami Hurricanes on that mega showdown October the 3rd. Now, Tulsa, I'm sure they're going to be thinking about the first quarter of this game for quite a while because their first four possessions had opportunity written all over it, but credit the Oklahoma Center defense for turning the Golden Hurricane away. Tulsa's first possession, three plays and punt. Second possession, interception in the end zone by Brian Jackson. Third possession, a long field goal, short. And then the fourth possession, Tulsa QB, DJ Kenny, stripped. Lost the ball, Oklahoma recovers. Again, all four possessions were in Oklahoma territory, but all four possessions for Tulsa, nada, zip. And Oklahoma made Tulsa pay after that. The game went from 10-0 early in the second quarter to what I like to call the snowball effect. You know, as the snowball rolls down the hill, it grows in size. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, because Tulsa didn't take advantage of those early opportunities, Oklahoma created a snowball effect of their own as the Golden Hurricane deficit grew bigger and bigger and bigger. Oklahoma's next five possessions, all touchdowns from that point on. Touchdown, 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 touchdown. It went from 10-0 to 45-0 with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. So again, Tulsa, they paid heavily for not taking advantage of early opportunities, and Oklahoma had no mercy on the Golden Hurricane on those ensuing five possessions. And what about Landry Jones? Landry Jones, the backup quarterback to Sam Bradford, getting his second consecutive start. Well, let me tell you something. Jones on Saturday did something that Sam Bradford, Jason White, Nate Hibble, Josh Heupel, or Paul Thompson never did. And that is through six touchdown passes, which, by the way, is a Sooner single game record. Remar remarkable game for Landry Jones, who, again, six touchdown passes, and he threw for over 300 yards. And, again, all that was before the halfway mark of the third quarter. Outstanding job by Mr. Jones. And also we have to give credit to the Sooners themselves. And what I mean by that, it was a record-setting day for Lander Jones. It was a record-setting day for Oklahoma. Their 26th straight home victory. I'm telling you what, you're not going to win in Norman. Not as long as Bob Stoops is there. Very rarely does Oklahoma drop a game. And you're definitely not going to beat them if they're scoring a lot of points. Oklahoma, 26 consecutive home victory. That is a team record, and that exceeds what those 1950s teams did when they won 47 straight overall games, which is an NCAA record. Those teams never won 26 straight at home, but these Oklahoma teams over the past four seasons have done that, and the best part is the home winning streak probably will not end anytime soon. Oklahoma will be favored to win the remaining four home games this year, so it could get up to 30 games, probably will, by season's end. Now, we also have to give credit to the Oklahoma defense, and this is gonna to go to key number one. Right now, we're gonna review the four keys to the Oklahoma Tulsa game that I reviewed on my pregame show just a few days ago. Key number one, don't let GJ ruin Oklahoma's day. Big thumbs up in this department for the Oklahoma defense. In fact, it was the opposite. It was the Oklahoma D that ruined GJ's day. Oklahoma knew that G.J. Kinney, Tulsa's quarterback, was also TU's leading rusher. He had 124 yards rushing after just two games, easily leading the Golden Hurricane in rushing. But in this game, he could not only not rush for success, but he couldn't even rush to get out of the pocket. He was pressured all day long. As a matter of fact, both of his interceptions in the first half were in the pocket. So if you're a defensive coordinator gaming up to play Tulsa, rule to self. Don't let G.J. Kinney get out of the pocket. Make him be a pocket passer because he's not the same quarterback when he's in the pocket as opposed to when he's out and Kinney had no running success whatsoever. In fact, he didn't even play part of the third quarter or any of the fourth quarter. So G.J. Kinney, not a factor at all in this game. Big thumbs up to the Oklahoma front seven. Now, number two, we're going to talk about second to none or in this case, second choice for Oklahoma. 
I've been harping on this for I don't know how long. Will Oklahoma find a go-to receiver besides Ryan Broyles? Number eight, Brandon Caleb. Brandon, welcome to college football. You had a spectacular game. Five catches, over 100 yards, two touchdowns, and that was all in the first half. And I think that answers the question, finally, if Oklahoma has a second go-to guy. Oh, and don't get me wrong, uh, Ryan Broyles had a marvelous game. He had even more receptions and more yardage and had one more touchdown than Caleb, but still that's fine because Caleb made the immediate impact in this game in the first half by scoring Oklahoma's first two touchdowns, and we saw Caleb do this in the game. Those were the angles that he was catching the passes, and believe me, those passes weren't always on target, but you know what? When you're catching the ball, on the stat sheet, it's still going to be a reception no matter what. So at times, Caleb did make um, Landry Jones look good. And we got to give credit to Caleb as well. He did an outstanding job of blocking. If you're going to be a receiver at Oklahoma, you can't just catch. You have to block too. He did both of those spectacularly on Saturday. Now, number three, three the hard way, meaning third down conversions another thumbs up that's three for three thumbs up i must be going crazy here another thumbs up for oklahoma they converted over half of their third down conversions that's what you have to do to be a successful team and tulsa who had entered the game converting close to 50 percent of their third down conversions they were six of 18. according to the new math that's 33 percent that's terrible it was a bad bad day for the tulsa offense in particular on third down but give credit to the oklahoma defense and also we have to remember something too Oklahoma had four quarterback sacks in the first half. They ended up with six for the game. Three of them were by Jeremy Beal. So I would not be surprised if Jeremy Beal of Oklahoma and if Landry Jones of Oklahoma were the Big 12 Offensive and Defensive Players of the Week. Don't be surprised if both players um, land those rewards. We'll have to wait and see, though. And then number four, key number four that I previewed um, on the pregame show was Focus on the hurricane, but don't focus on the hurricanes. Meaning, think about Tulsa, but don't think about your game against Miami, which is the next one. And this is an easy thumbs up, an overwhelming thumbs up, way up. Because it would have been easy after the Thursday night game against Miami. Remember, Miami played two days before Oklahoma, and Miami put a beat down on Georgia Tech, who was ranked at the time 14th in the country. So it would have been easy to think, man, this Miami team's pretty darn good. We better start game planning for them now. Uh-uh. Oklahoma did not let what Miami did on Thursday um, interrupt or disturb their preparation for the Golden Hurricane. They kept their focus on Tulsa, and that was confirmed on Saturday. So a big thumbs up. Now, Oklahoma, you can think about Miami. And the best part is you have two weeks to do it because you don't play next week. So overall, couldn't have been happier with the performance for Oklahoma. It doesn't mean, though, that the Sooners can't work on some things. They did have some drop passes. Um, Adron Tanel had a couple of drops, including a touchdown pass that he let slip through his fingers. And then also Oklahoma did have four holding penalties. So overall, I like it because not only did Oklahoma get a convincing win, but they have things they can work on too. So they can continue to improve. And that's what you want right now. So again, 45 to nothing. The Sooners uh, pasted the Golden Hurricane. And I think they answered a lot of critics' questions, including me. I'm a big OU fan, but I try to see the games objectionably. And the Sooners made a believer out of me on Saturday. And it will send a lot of confidence entering their showdown against Miami. Again, Oklahoma, this is a bye week for them. They're going to take the week off, and so am I. So my Oklahoma-Miami pregame will not be until either September 29th or 30th. So check back with us during that time. 45 nothing Oklahoma 2 and 1 on the season and because USC as well as BYU losing the Sooners should move up at least two spots in the upcoming AP and coaches polls goodbye for now